Lydia Lovelace just does not compute. Not not in this day and age. If the past thirty years or so have taught us anything, it's not to expect good music anymore. Um, that might be an overstatement, somewhat, but not to expect good music of this caliber, great music, um, everything, 99% is, uh, you know, corporate run labels, uh, doing market focus testing and putting out music with, uh, you know, a hint of genuineness, maybe, sometimes not even that anymore, usually not even that anymore, glossed over with um, a sheen of um, decorative, decorative nothing really, um, but I never expected this, this late in the game, um, and frankly I'm stunned and then just in awe so and I wanted to uh, do a review of this album it came out in February this is her latest album um, this would be her third fourth if you count the EP um, but I wanted to wait I just wanted to make sure because I uh, I got this and I got uh, a couple of her albums beforehand this came out February. I got a couple of her albums in December and uh, played them, been playing them pretty much nonstop. But uh, I really didn't even trust my ears, uh, to be honest. And uh, so I set this aside for a few weeks, didn't listen to it, pulled it out today, listened to it again, uh, kind of anew. Um, so, what, a little background. Um, she's 23. I had never heard of her until last December. I get, uh, and I've, I've said this in other videos, but I get um, emails, record labels, and places that sell records. So uh, back in mid-December or so, Bloodshot Records sent out an email. They're having a sale, Christmas sale, and I bounced over to their site. Saw her, uh, among other people, other records, not a clue who she was probably would have just looked right past it but I read a uh, couple of quotes I didn't even know what type of music she made at that point or who she was but uh, I, something to the effect of uh, you know Joan Jett fronting the clash or if you believe in rock and roll you pray for someone like Lydia Lovelace um, here's one that's uh, was an older quote but they put it on the sticker for a new album it's uh is Stevie Nicks singing lead on Born to Run overstating it? Probably, but too bad. Um, and I thought, well, that's just silly hype, but it did intrigue me to go over and listen to some of the uh, clips of her just not being out yet at that point, but some of her, um, that's her album a couple of years ago. This is her album, or EP, five song uh, EP from limited edition thing from last year that's still available. Rush out and buy that. I'll just go ahead and get to that right now. Uh, my favorite record of the year in 2013. And um, grab this one real quick. This is her uh, first release from uh, 2010 or 2009. I think when she would have been about 18 or so so which that is now out of print so I'm glad I picked that up It's never available on vinyl uh, you can still get it on mp3 but uh, and this is a very uh, like a homemade uh, CD cover the anyway enough of that um, so what yeah, I listened to some of the songs and I thought and I'll say right up front, and I've said this before, I'm an older guy, and I'm uh, one of those, you know, uh, for my interest in music, by and large, ends around 84, 85-ish. Uh, and there's been things that I've liked since then, but um, nothing that I would consider great. 
really. I mean, there's some really good albums, a uh, few. Uh, but, um, well, I'm, Derek Vaughn had his Why Music contest, and, and Robert Z and his response was talking about albums that are like members of the family, like old friends that you go through life with. Um, and, you know, I don't really need to. London Calling, the Beatles albums, you know, Rolling Stones albums, uh, things like that. Uh, Village Green by the Kinks would be one for me. Um, I had uh, The Jam, Purple Rain. I, I, you know, you get the idea. I haven't had an album like that in 80, 85, 84, maybe, last time. And, uh, you know, and I've had albums that I've liked. Uh, but so I listened to the uh, clips on the website. I thought, hold on a minute. This is this isn't just good. This is this is this is good. This is great. But surely not. I mean, as as crappy as music generally is these last few decades, and and I'm I'm not. I hate to make blanket statements like that. I'm just talking from my own uh, taste or experience, and I I certainly wish it weren't that way. I wish it were still like the, you know, that 50s through the 80s where you had good music coming out on a regular basis, great music coming out on a regular basis. Uh, for me personally, maybe it's getting older. Uh, maybe it's just the music's not as good. Um, you know, but I mean, I just, I don't expect things like this anymore. Um, and there's been stuff that I've liked, like I said, and I thought, well, okay, it's good, it's not great. There's been stuff that I I liked uh, at first, and then uh, the White Stripes, I like them. I got into them uh, before, uh, uh, right about the time White Blood Cells came out, uh, right before that. Um, and I liked them quite a bit, but then a year or two later, a couple of years later, I thought, well, you know, they're okay, they're not great. They're not bad now. I really don't haven't listened to them in a long time. I still, I, I still rate them as okay, but nothing special. I mean, they're not Kinks, Beatles, Clash, uh, you know, level. Um, and there's been other bands like that, you know, that I've liked. And then later on, I thought I don't know what I was thinking, or they're just okay. Uh, but that, you know, I mean the. These memories of uh, bringing home Purple Rain, of bringing home uh, uh, albums by The Who or The Kinks or whatever, uh, sound effects by The Jam, and you just knew that that was going to be uh, something that was meaningful and important and a part of your life for the rest of your life, a friend for life. Uh, I hadn't had that in years, decades, so this this hit me off guard to say the least. Um, and if if any of y'all go and listen to this or any of her other stuff, you might think, well, she's crap or, well, she's nice, but I don't know what he's getting all carried away about. But um, And I feel si silly sitting here saying this is greatness uh, because it's been so long, I guess. Uh, but I, and, you know, like I said, I put the record aside for a few weeks and listened to it again today, and it's uh, it's still, still just... Uh, knock me off my feet. Uh, I, I feel absurd and ridiculous saying this, but uh, Lydia Loveless may well be the best thing that's happened to music since Joe Strummer, Paul Weller, and Prince came along. <laughs> and as crazy as that sounds, the more I listen, the more I think maybe that's not so crazy after all. So, She's 23, like I said, she's from Ohio. Uh, she and her d two sisters and her brother and her dad apparently had a band, so they learned to play and sing from an early age, the kids did. I, I mean, kids, she's 23, but um, I don't know whether they played anywhere or just played around the the house or whatever, but I don't. they never made any records. Um, she... Uh, made her first record, I think that was 2010, I should have actually checked that before I started making the video, so she would have been about 18, I guess. Um, her sister, uh, every, all of her sister has a band called The Girls, 
Uh, I'll get to that in a second video. They just released their first album. Uh, another sister is in a band with the uh, cheerful title of The Dead Girlfriends. As far as I know, they don't have anything out. And her brother is in a uh, death metal band. Go figure. So, and I uh, don't think he has anything out. Um, it's, she's a country singer, sort of, kind of. Uh, sort of more or less and I don't really like country music so that makes this even more surprising um, you know uh, some Johnny Cash some uh, Jimmy Rogers uh, some of the old Hank Williams and stuff is, is pretty good from time to time it, when I'm in the mood which is very rare most country and I'm not knocking it I'm not wanting to dismiss a whole genre of music it's like rap I can't stand rap but I don't want to dismiss it for people that like it uh, country just doesn't do it for me and most of it I just really really don't like at all um, but she's country in the way that Prince is soul and I'm not sure if Prince is soul I mean he is but he's a lot more than that uh, he's soul rock and I don't know exactly what he is other than he's great uh, there's so, I mean, there's Americana, there's country, there's rock and roll, there's pop, there's uh, a, a little bit of a soul. She doesn't sound like soul music, but she, you can tell that she knows it and loves it. Um, there's some folk. Um, but here's the other thing. I mean, a lot of the bands, even the ones of the last 30 years or so that are pretty good, it, you can tell their influences and a lot of them a lot of music is just crap or it's just bland to my ears a lot of music it's uh, the influences show through and there's really none of the person in there no or little originality if any um, it, what I'm saying is you know the Beatles the Rolling Stones Led Zeppelin those guys uh, the Clash you know they were all influenced by Elvis and Buddy Holly and the old blues guys and stuff like that, uh, among other people. But, and then the Clash being a little younger, they were influenced by the Beatles and the Rolling Stones, et cetera, et cetera. But the Clash don't sound like the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. They sound like the Clash. The Beatles don't sound like Elvis or the Everly Brothers or Buddy Holly. You know, Jimi Hendrix doesn't sound like uh, Little Richard and Chuck Berry. And if you look hard enough in those people, sure, you can see influences here, signs of their influences here and there, but they got their own sound. Um, even, you know, say the Cars and the Talking Heads, bands I like, I wouldn't put them on the same level as Beatles and Clash and Kinks and Rolling Stones, but the Cars sound like the Cars. The talking Heads sound like the Talking Heads. As so many bands nowadays in these last few decades they just all sound alike, and a lot of them just sound like they're trying to go for that, you know, we're trying to sound like a 60s garage band. And some of them, they manage to be okay. They even manage maybe a good song or two. But overall, if I want to listen to the 60s garage band sound, I'll go get a record by a 60s garage band because they did it first and they did it better, and it was new and fresh and original when they did it, and it wasn't just a rehash of somebody trying to um, and Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings, I really like her, she's good, but I mean, sometimes they try a little too hard to sound like that 60s and 70s soul sound uh, for comfort, and uh, they're good, but are they, you know, Curtis Mayfield, Al Green, Otis Redding, Aretha Franklin good? No, you know, um, Raphael Sadiq is the only other person I would put up in this category, he's, he's, but he's got a new album coming out this year, so I've heard. So when that comes out, we'll talk about him then. But um, you can hear her influences, but she sounds like, Lydia Loveless sounds like Lydia Loveless. She's got her own, you know. And I mean, I'm going to talk about where you can hear some of her influences here in a minute on some of the songs on this album. But she's got her own uh, sound and her own thing going on. And um, she's... Uh, lyrics song lyrics used to be about something I mean, even things like Louie Louie or she loves you yeah 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 I mean 
not all of them had to be profound, like A Change Is Gonna Come by Sam Cooke or the songs on Free Willy and Bob Dylan, but in his own way, She Loves You and I Want to Hold Your Hand are profound too, but song lyrics of the last uh, few years or decades, they're either just silly and crap, or a lot of them, they don't even make any sense. It's like, what was this song about, you know? To me, again, I'm saying, if you like stuff, I'm not trying to rain on anybody's uh, parade. If you're a big fan of the uh, music of the 2000s and the 90s, I'm not uh, not trying to run it down. Just saying what I feel personally. Um, she's a, she's a good lyricist, uh, better than good. She's pretty damn great, and it's fun too. She's uh, she's got a filthy mouth, you know, and, in a good way, but it's not that cheesy, you know, those little singing Pop-Tarts on the radio and stuff that are doing Miley Cyrus and Britney Spears that are, you know, let's put something dirty in there to be shocking and get record sales. You get the feeling, I don't know her, so who knows, but that she does this because she can't not do it. Kind of like the people, Joe Strummer, Paul Weller, John Lennon, Am I saying she's in the same category with John Lennon? I don't know if I'm ready to go that far, no, but she might be in that neighborhood, as crazy as that sounds. So, um, but yeah, I don't think she can not do this. I think she does it because she loves it. I don't think she's all that interested, and again, I'm not trying to speak for her because I don't know her. Um, it doesn't seem like she's that interested in the trappings of... Uh, just empty fame and fortune that's so common in our society and culture these last 10, 20 years with the American Idol reality TV, internet, and so forth. Um, I'm sure she'd like to get popular, make some money, buy a swimming pool and a cool car like you or I would or anybody else would, but I think she does this stuff from the heart. Um, for someone who's supposed to be a country singer, I mean, you've got um, Verlaine shot Rimbaud, Tom Verlaine and Arthur Rimbaud. Don't really hear that on country albums too often. Neither I never have. Charles Bukowski's a big influence on her, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, I just I'm I really don't even believe this is is is. <laughs> Uh, I would certainly urge everybody to check her out if you don't run out and buy the album, which you should. You should buy this one and uh, some of the others. I'll get to that. Uh, I would say at least get on YouTube and look up and listen to some of her songs. I'll give you a couple to listen to here in a minute. I mean, you can go on and listen to pretty much any of them. Um, so, yeah. Let's run through real quick. This one, her first release, CD only, things coming loose there, um, came like that. Um, this is the the most country sounding of her records, and it's also it's not as bad as all that. But that modern country, it doesn't sound like that. It sounds her her country sound is the old. Uh, the old, uh, you know, 40s and 50s and, and uh, uh, Hank Williams and Johnny Cash type stuff. It's not, if, if you're Garth Brooks and George Strait and I don't know, what, what, who's, who's some of them, Miranda Lambert or something, if, if that's your, your thing, you ain't going to find that here. So don't, don't waste your time if that's what you like. Uh, personally, I don't like any of that stuff, so... Uh, but this is the closest to a country sound, um, and it's got some of the uh, country music cliches in here. Um, she doesn't like this album, as I've read in interviews anyway. Like I said, she was 18. She was probably just happy to have a uh, record deal, be in a studio. Sounds like one of those situations where the uh, some guy was running the show and saying, okay, little girl, here, here's how this goes, and, and uh, she wasn't really happy with this. For all that, a little insert that comes with that, it's not a bad record. It's, it's 
she would get better really quick. But uh, there are some, uh, uh, a couple of silly songs on here, but there's a couple of songs on here that are pretty good. It's, it's her least, the least among her efforts. Uh, this would be the place to go after you've listened to her other stuff. If you like her other stuff and you want to pick this up just to be complete. And it's, it's not worth, it's not, like it's not worth having. It's, it's just okay. She made a uh, huge leap forward in, uh, hold on, and I will see, 2011, so I guess that was 209, not 210, um, Indestructible Machine, her first, uh, well, her second album, really, but uh, this is where she pretty much took control of the songwriting. I think she wrote some of the songs on her first album. Um, still has a country sound. Um but has a lot more rock and roll and pop influence creeping into great album. Um, and rock and roll, she's a uh, country, I'm saying, to kind of an Americana sound. But she's not stiff. This isn't, um, this isn't that uh, very, um, oh, Alison Krauss and, and, um, and um, I just went blank, uh, Nico Case and that, where they're very, Prim proper soccer mom approved NPR approved uh, uh, very uh, reverent of the genre of country or Americana and and very nice and polite and uh, kind of boring. Which not say there's there's few uh, Nico Case songs that I like. I'm not running her down either. But uh, Leah Loveless is is a lot more fun, a lot more vibrant. A lot more genuine, a lot more uh, uh, crazy, and the kind of the kind of girl. If she got mad at you, she'd uh, beat your ass with a baseball bat and catch your car on fire. And that probably not far from true in real life. I'm I don't know, but anyway, she's 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 uh, she loves the music, but she's not overly respectful of it. She's not like she's paying homage to some great music of old. She just goes in there and does it. It's it's an organic, natural, without artifice, uh, and just kind of kicks the shit out of it and has fun with it. Um, they, uh, uh, yeah, but I said her, her, her dad and her siblings and her were in a band when they were kids, apparently. Uh, from an interview, she said her dad was a... Uh, preacher at some point early on and they were real strict upbringing couldn't celebrate Halloween and you know watch TV and all that and then their dad decided to uh, uh, give that up and opened a bar and the family all sat around drinking and having fun all day instead so uh, there's a line in here that says uh, I was raised on whiskey in the Bible so I'm a little bit confused um, kind of a cool lyric. This is a great album to get. Um, check that out. That's her 211 effort. She improved again, which is rare for bands nowadays, with uh, last year's Boy Crazy five song EP. Uh, like I said, limited edition, but it's still around. Go out and grab it now. Not a bad song on there. Uh, it's, uh, uh, and like I said on her lyrics, uh, Lover Spat is, uh, there's not a bad song on here, but Lover Spat is probably my, my favorite of the five. Um, and, uh, a little bit of country sounding, but it's really a rock and roll pop song. It's got some cool background vocals that bring a little bit of a surf music sound from the 60s in there. This really wonderful, great song, strange song. It starts off well. Well, I know we just met, but I like you a lot. Come home with me tonight. And at that point, it's kind of country sounding, and you're thinking, okay, this is like, this is like, you know, eight million country songs you've already heard. Um, but uh, if it if it all works out, you can stay all night. We can get into a little fight. You know, okay. And when the cops get called, you can hide behind. You can hide in the closet or behind my back. 
you know, like, okay, what's going on here? Um, the next line, so don't go running around naked by the side of the road. You look ridiculous with that cut on your eye and you're <clears throat> hanging out. Why don't you care about us? And you're like, well, what the hell's going on in this song? You know, uh, I mean, when you hear the song, it, it better than when I'm reading it. Um, and then it ends with, uh, you know, when they go looking for the pieces of you, they can figure out it was just a lover's spat. You're like, this don't sound like no regular country song that I've ever heard. So, uh, turns out that that was a, uh, she was planning to write a, her or some other people were planning to write a, a series of songs about Jeffrey Dahmer, the serial killer. A cheery, I know, but, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, Bukowski, Jeffrey Dahmer, uh, Tom Verlaine, Arthur Rimbaud. Uh, so, yeah, you got a serial killer, but uh, The Water is a wonderful ballad. Uh, that Boy Crazy Thing is just a great guitar, rave up, rock and roll song. Uh, these two songs on the started off are great. Uh, 10 out of 10. Go out and buy that. So then comes February, her new album. And I knew this was coming out, and I ordered it, pre-ordered it on vinyl. They even had the entire album up a week or two before it came out. on uh, You could do a streaming on a site on the internet. I hadn't listened to it. Uh, I wanted to. But I thought, no, I don't want to. I want to wait till I get the record. I want to open up the record like in the old days with a brand new record, you know, put it on and kick back and listen to it, hold the cover, look at the inserts and all that. Uh, so, and as a grower, first time I heard this, I thought, well, it's good, but I didn't think it was as good as the, the two that came before it. Second time I heard it, I thought, well, that was pretty good. You know, it's just not bad. Third time I was like, eh, yeah, I mean... Anyway, again, she's improved. Uh, this is, this is, those are great. This is her best yet. Um, there's some country on here. There's not, it's there. It, it's, it's, it's pushed to the background or it shares equal space with the rock and the pop influences now. Um, some great lyrics again. Um, there is, um, well, one thing, the genuineness, um, Nina Simone, I'm thinking maybe Hank Williams, uh, John Lennon at times, otherwise, uh, Loveless delivers or emotes or sings ache and, um, loneliness better than just about anyone out there past or present, and, uh, and really, I mean, not, not just, you know, I'm going to make this song sound like it's a sad song for the mood of the song. I mean, it seems real. I mean, maybe it's not. I don't know, but it, it sure seems like that. Uh, so I'm looking at some notes that I bought. Um, some of the songs, I'm not going to go through every one, Really Want to See You is a great one. Every, every song on here is, is, is really great. Um, uh, to love somebody is a good good uh, example of that uh, just sort of a aching. Uh, 